Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yes, Houston. I am ready for the event. Tokyo, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Okay. Uh, station, uh, Tokyo, for Nemo, how do you read me? Good afternoon, everyone in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo, Yukiko Yamada. Good afternoon, everyone in Tokyo. I'm Murishige Kanai from ISS, so I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you, Mr. Kanai. We have Minister Hashi up next, and we also have Mr. Yoshino for reconstruction. We have been waiting for this opportunity. Now I'd like to invite the Mr. Hayashi, Minister of Education, to give him a message. Yes, I'm Minister Hayashi. I'm very happy to be able to talk to you again. The last time I talked to you was during ISF2 in March. And then you've done a great job since then. I am with Minister Yoshino from Tokyo, and we have the public viewing event in Fukushima Prefecture. There are a lot of questions expected from Fukushima as well. I am looking forward to hear from you that you are working on a dream medicine. Yes, Minister Hayashi, thank you for taking time at late hours of the day at GEM, we are trying to synthesize protein. While I am staying in ISS, I had two opportunities to carry out experiments. 46 different high-quality proteins were actually synthesized. We have been able to, we have been able to send these proteins and these proteins will be analyzed on ground when we have good results. These results will be utilized by pharmaceutical companies to generate and develop new medicine. It's a small box. Everything started there. We received samples in small box. There's a lot of hopes inside as well, your passions as well. So I was very much impressed to be able to receive that sample in the first place. Minister Yoshino, would you like to give uh, Mr. Kanai a message as well? How do you do? I'm Masayoshi Yoshino, the Minister for Reconstruction. I am born in Iwaki City in Fukushima Prefecture. We had the great East Japan earthquake. Since then, it's been seven years. We have a university student here in Fukushima two of them. We also have children from uh, primary school, junior high schools. They have been looking forward to this opportunity to speak with you t today. What I'd like to ask you now is about science and technology and reconstruction. This is a major theme for us. So your mission there in space, how does your mission help create a better future for the disaster-stricken area in Japan. Yes, Minister Yoshino, thank you. It's a great honor. The other day, we flew over Fukushima in ISS. We have been able to see Bandai San Mountain and Inawashiro Lake. It was a great view from space. Fukushima Prefecture is blessed with rich and beautiful nature. Because of that, I'm pretty sure they will be able to overcome difficult challenge to carry out and follow through the reconstruction process. Now, when you think of science and technology and how it relates or contribute to disaster recovery, we carry out various experiments in space using science and technology. We're developing science and technology here as well. For example, we have water regeneration system, which generate drinking water for us to drink. This technology can be very useful during a disaster, and we eat space food here. This has to be stored for a long time. 
to make sure it's safe and tasty. We have food technology that is applied. This, too, is very useful during disaster. We are far away from Earth. We are isolated in a way. We are all placed under stress. But how can we carry out our work in healthy state? That know-how can also be applied to disaster-stricken areas. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kanai. We have Mr. Tsutsui, a student who is trying to become a medical doctor. Would you like to ask a question? I'm Yuha Tsutsui. Glad to meet you. I would like to be a medical doctor. That's why I study today. My question is your bodily change under uh, microgravity, change in your health, and have you had any great ideas to be applied to future medicine? Thank you for your question. For the change to my body in space, as you may be able to see uh, on the screen, my face has swollen, and I've got a no nasal voice after coming to uh, the uh, coming to the space. This is because the body fluid uh, used to stay in the lower half of the body when I was on the Earth, but when I come to space and the body fluid also circulates to the upper part of my body. And I've got maybe um, new ideas about medicine um, in space. On the International Space Station, we are living away from the Earth, and the astronauts are living together. So whenever we have a medical problem, how we can cope with such medical problems? So remote medicine me or remote treatment or the astronauts can treat each other. Uh, we, need, we have gained skills to treat each other uh, during training. Such knowledge and know-how will be useful for remote areas and remote islands. This will be very helpful for doctors to respond to such problems, even on the Earth. Or this may not be so realistic, but in zero gravity, when we think about medicine in zero gravity, if you, when, when we treat uh, the patient burned all over his body, when uh, he is lying on the bed, then his bag is in contact with the, the surface of the bed, and it's very hard for the burn to be cured. But if we can bring him to space and can treat him in space, and then he doesn't have to sleep on a bed because his back is not in contact with the surface of the bed, so the burn on the back will be cured more quickly. So space is a very extreme condition. So when you think of such an extreme environment, you can um, get a new idea, an unconventional idea. Well, thank you very much for a very uh, passionate answers to the medical question. Next question is from uh, Mr. Kusaka, who is now uh, studying at to Tohoku University, who is a graduate of the Futaba Mirai Gakuen. Hello, my name is uh, Yuta, Yuta Kusaka uh, of Tohoku University. I was the senior when I was a senior high school student, I was the president of the student council, and I was also a member of drama club performing plays about our daily life in Futaba district of Fukushima prefecture. My question is, uh, what are the things you do every day, and what do you think is important in your daily life in space? Thank you for your question. Um, here in space, you may think that the environment is completely different, from the environment on the Earth, but I don't think so. We have expanded our sphere or scope of activities, and the, uh, just like the sea and the sky, uh, the space is uh, another uh, place for humans to uh, 
um, to do jobs. So space is nothing special. Uh, space is also a place where humans uh, work. So it's an the extension of the Earth environment. That's um, what I'm thinking when I'm working here. So when I work in, I'm working here, sound, smell, and light, I can sense these things just like I do on the Earth. So our work is the same, uh, whether you are on the Earth or in space. Our colleagues are chatter, chatting and uh, during and the light turns to red, a reddish, uh, orange uh, at night when it comes to sound. Uh, the pump is circulating. Um, so I can feel a life, daily life, even on this uh, space station. We also are connected to Mikawa Dai Elementary School, where they are having the public viewing. And we have got questions from the people of Kushima. Uh, the, we also got questions from elementary and junior high school students who are reunited from, for the first time in seven years since the East Japan earthquake. The Dr. Mori, please. Hi, Kanai. It's been a long time from Earth. I see you succeed and flawless on ISS. Your hair's grown, but you look very good. Now, I have uh, questions from Fukushima, so try to answer them, all of them, if possible. We have sixth grader of Mikadai Primary School, Haruki Hakozaki, asks that you are a medical doctor and martial artist. Your experience as a martial artist and doctor, uh, how does, does the experience help you in space? It's been some time, Mr. Mori. Thank you. I am fine. Martial art. Uh, yes, I have a little experience of martial art, but it's not limited to martial art. You have to keep a peace of mind in space as well. To practice martial art, you have to practice the same art many times, many, many times. The training of an astronaut is similar. For example, how you manipulate the rubber arm or EVA or how you operate the spacecraft. It's difficult. You don't want to fail. So you become tense. A lot of operations are very challenging. But then you have to train yourself to practice so many times so that you will become confident when you have to cross the bridge. And then you should not be extremely tense as you operate. And you can get rid of that by having many practices. It's similar as a doctor as well. I have for I, I was a surgeon. I did a lot of operations. Each operation, surgery is very difficult. What I do, um, the life depends on what I do. So I have to go through specific procedures to make sure that I will never fail in the surgery. And that is how I approached the surgery. The daily operation as an astronaut you know, is the same as that. So maybe I believe that Haruki Hakozaki's hobby is martial art. My second question here is from the third grader of Kitasawabata Primary School, Kazuma uh, Watanabe. And we also have a similar question from Hinata Kanno, the sixth grader of Yamakiya Primary School, about space food. Do you actually eat cake to celebrate the birthday in space? Do you like candles? And um, is, oh, does your room in ISS ever smell the food? Oh, very wonderful question. Thank you very much for that question. The commander, Anton, he's a Russian. Uh, he act actually had a birthday recently, and we prepared the birthday cards. We actually uh, wrote messages on the card, and also we had brought uh, presents to give to Anton. We had uh, his birthday celebration. Uh, 
In Japanese beef food, curry and white rice are actually packed in together. Um, he was pleased to receive that. And the cake, the birthday cake, uh, the cake that you know of is not here in ISS. But do you, can you imagine a tube that uh, tastes like tu uh, cake? I remember that we ate that tube cake taste. I had some doubts, but it tasted good. It was very sweet and very nice. But as I said, it came in a tube, so we were not able to uh, light candles. But about the smell, the food smell, it's an interesting question. There is no gravity in space. So if you don't move, the air would not circulate at all. It's very stable. So you open up the package of space food, the whole room will be filled with the smell of the food. And we breathe, you know, unless there is no air circulation, the CO2 will stay around our face, our mouth and nose. So it gets very stuffy. So we always have air conditioners to forcefully circulate air inside the room. So when you open up the package, it smells a bit. But then after that, since we actually close the air circulation, it goes away. And the third question. Third question is uh, from uh, Shigihara, Mahiro Shigihara, secondary student at the Yamakiya Junior High School. How do you make oxygen on the station? And how do you get rid of unnecessary uh, CO2? Hi, this is this is a very uh, good question for study. I think you learn in your science class that water is uh, analyzed by uh, electricity and it's uh, converted into hydrogen and oxygen. So we use electrolyte to produce oxygen. Oxygen is consumed by humans for breathing, but uh, hydrogen, the surplus, so hydrogen is combined with uh, CO2 that is coming up from humans. So uh, they are combined to produce uh, water. So uh, we have a recycling system on the space station to produce water and um, oxygen. People in Fukushima, Dr. Mori, um, Dr. Kanai, um, uh, thank you very much, Minister Yoshino. Uh, um, elementary school and junior high school in Fukushima resumed um, uh, the classes in April this year, but not all of, all, the, all the students have returned to classes, so we are using ICT. Um, three uh, schools are using ICT, so about 30 students are taking uh, classes utilizing ICT. Now, you are a medical doctor and also an um, astronaut. You achieved your dream. How can you, uh, how could you uh, realize your dream? That's number one. And number two, we have a um, Fukushima Innovation Coast Initiative. We are trying to uh, grow new industries to expedite reconstruction of Fukushima. One is robot industry. What kind of robots? are you using on the space station? Hi, Yoshino Daijin, thank you. Minister Yoshino, thank you for your questions. To your first question, I myself was not a good student. I was kind of a dropout. So I was rather a bad student. And I was guided by my teachers and also the uh, coaches of the uh, clubs and teachers and my predecessor seniors have guided me at the important junctures of my life. And somehow I became an astronaut and working as an astronaut. When it comes to robots, we have uh, robots um, working on the Kibo module. For example, 